Hi, Reading Buddies. It's Maria, the Scary Story Lady, and I have another scary story for you from the Night Fright Collection by J.B. Stamper. Tonight, I'll be reading Coming to Get You. It was one of those October nights, cold and windy, that makes you want to crawl under a blanket, but as soon as you turn off the light, you can't go to sleep. That's what happened to Beth and me. We were staying alone in her parents' cabin, which was right in the middle of a big forest preserve. Beth's parents had driven into the city that night to go to the theater. They promised to be back as soon as possible, but that couldn't be before two o'clock. I was worried about the idea of Beth and me being all alone in that small cabin, surrounded by big shadowy trees, but Beth acted as though she wasn't scared at all. Just before her parents left, they threw a few more logs onto the fire and put up the screen. They told us to leave the fire alone and let it burn out. If we got chilly, we could just go to bed. After they left, Beth and I sat on the big bearskin rug in front of the fireplace and played board games and talked. The fire burned fast and hot for the first two hours. Then the logs started to crumble into ashes and the orange flames died down into glowing embers. The wind outside had grown stronger and was whistling around the house, blowing through little cracks in the walls and chilling us to the bone. I started to shiver, although I don't think it was just from the cold. Suddenly, the idea where we were, all alone, had started to prey on my mind. I remembered how far down the road into the forest we had traveled without seeing another house. And even during the day, the trees around the house hadn't looked beautiful and comforting. They were big pines with long, ragged limbs covered with needles. Looking out the window now, I could see their limbs flapping in the wind like ghostly arms. Beth, can we go to bed now, I asked. I knew my voice was shaking, but I hoped she wouldn't notice. It's not that cold, she answered. Anyway, I can make us some hot chocolate. Okay, but can we just take it up into the loft and drink it in bed? I pleaded. I like being up there at night. It feels warm and secure. I think you're scared, Beth said, as she went to the kitchen to make the hot chocolate. Don't worry. You'll get used to being in this place at night. I used to be really afraid when I was younger, especially after that kid from town told me those stupid stories about this place. I sat on the floor by the glowing embers of the fireplace, turning over Beth's words in my mind. What stories was she talking about? And did I want to find out? Curiosity and fear started churning my imagination into terrible thoughts. Finally, I realized I had to ask Beth about the stories before I drove myself mad. What stories were you talking about, I asked, my voice shaking again. Just forget it. I don't want to think about them. Here's the hot chocolate. Help me carry it up to the loft. We can crawl under the covers there. Anyway, it's always warmer right under the roof. As Beth turned off the lights in the cabin, I walked over to the ladder that led up to the small sleeping loft. The loft was a wooden platform built across one part of the room's high ceiling, which came to a peak on top. I scrambled up the ladder first, suddenly feeling as though I had to get away from something that might be chasing me. I reached down and took the two cups of hot chocolate from Beth's hands. Then she followed me up the ladder. We settled into the thick goose down comforter on the loft floor. There was a small window beside us that looked out into the tall trees of the forest. Several of the trees were only a feet away from us where we sat in the loft. Look, a full moon, I said, gazing at the silvery disk in the sky. Oh, Beth said with a sudden gasp. I didn't know it was time for full moon. What's wrong, I asked, turning my worried eyes to her. Does it, does it have something to do with the stories? Forget I mentioned them, Beth said sharply. Just forget it. I turned away, feeling angry, and stared out the window. We sat in silence for a while, both not wanting to be the first to talk. Then suddenly we heard something that made both of us stare at each other with wide eyes. It was a clawing sound on the outside timbers of the house. Scritch, scritch, scritch. For a few moments I was too scared to say anything. I just sat there waiting for the sound to come again, but I heard nothing. Nothing but the moaning of the wind through the trees. Did you hear that? I asked Beth. What was it? Beth just scrunched down further under the comforter. By the moonlight, I could see her face. It looked scared. The sound came again. Scritch. 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 This time, it was on another side of the house, by the front door. Beth, did your parents lock the front door? I asked, my voice choking with fear. Yes, she said. 
and I double-checked it. I could tell how scared she was. Her voice sounded tight and strange, as though she was feeling really sick. Oh, no, she said suddenly and grabbed my arm. The kitchen window. I remember seeing that it was open a couple of inches. My dad forgot to close it after he burned the steak tonight. Oh, no, what if that thing keeps moving around the house? It could get in through the window. I started to feel even sicker. We've got to go down and close that window, I said, reaching over and shaking Beth. Come on, you've got to come with me. I dragged Beth to her feet and crawled over to the ladder. As I started down the rungs, I heard the sound again, moving around the house in the direction of the kitchen. Scritch, scritch, scritch. I heard a choking sob come from Beth's throat as she stumbled down the ladder after me. We stood in our bare feet on the cold floor and froze to the spot as the sound rasped against the outside of the wall of the house again, this time nearer the kitchen. Scritch, scritch, scritch. What if it's the werewolf, Beth said, her voice shaking with horror. That's what the stories are about, a werewolf. He comes out on nights with a full moon. Fear gripped my body until I felt deathly sick but I knew I had to get to that kitchen window before whatever was out there did. I grabbed Beth's arm and pulled her toward the kitchen. The sound was louder now, coming along the outside wall. Scritch, scritch, scritch. We walked into the kitchen and saw the window standing open. I forced myself to walk over to it. Just as I reached up to slam down the window, I saw a hairy arm with long pointed claws reach through it into the room. I was too afraid to scream, but Beth shrieked with horror at the top of her lungs. I couldn't think with that hairy arm coming at me through the window. I just slammed down the window on the arm with all my might. There was a terrible howl of pain from outside. Then the hairy arm jerked away, and I heard heavy footsteps running into the night. No, 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 Beth screamed out of control as we stared at the place where we'd seen the horrible arm reaching out to get us. I don't know where I found the feeling of calm, but I reached up and locked the window. I looked out and saw a big shadowy figure limping off into the night, howling to the moon. It's gone, Beth. We're safe, I said. But what if it comes back, Beth said, her voice choked with fear. Don't think about it, I said. Then suddenly, all I wanted was to get back up to that loft. I started to run, and Beth followed me. We climbed up the rungs of the ladder as fast as we could and huddled under the blankets together. Beth was sobbing, but I finally got her to stop by telling her that the worst was over. We were safe now. Then we heard the sound, scritch, scritch, scritch. It was the sound of the claws outside the kitchen walls. Then I heard the window being forced open, scritch, scritch, scritch. Now the sound was moving from the kitchen toward the living room. No, Beth screamed, no. I clamped my hand over her mouth. Maybe I thought, maybe it can't find us in the dark, but we had to be quiet, perfectly quiet. Scritch, scritch, scritch. In my mind, I saw the hairy arm coming toward us through the dark. Beth was shaking so hard I had to hold her still. Then I heard the claws at the bottom of the ladder. Scritch, scritch, scritch. It was climbing the rungs one by one. Beth and I huddled together against the wall. We could hear the beast coming closer, closer, closer. Then there was a sudden flash of light through the window. It shone like a spotlight on top of the ladder, and I saw the hairy arm there coming to get us. The lights were from Beth's father's car, and he saved us just in time. It's been a long time since this happened, and I'm almost back to normal, except at night, during a full moon, when I hear funny sounds in the house. Scritch, scritch. Scritch. Do you ever hear funny sounds at night? Something like scritch, scritch, scritch. Thank you for listening to another story from Night Frights, and there'll be another story coming your way soon. Good night. Scritch, scritch, scritch.